Hey guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be reacting to this Jubilee video that I found from a while ago. I think the reason this was recommended to me was because of this whatever podcast clip. If you haven't seen it, I want to play it for you just for a second so you know what I'm talking about. It made a lot of people, especially women, very, very angry. In fact, they were calling her the female Andrew Tate, a pick me, all these things. So just take a look at this video with me first. I don't like makeup. I'm against makeup. I don't think it's good for women and I don't think they really need to be using it, honestly. I think it takes yes. away. <laughs> That's awesome. Makeup is... The girl in the back is not being subtle at all. <laughs> it's capitalizing on women's insecurities when it's something that they can easily fix. I think it takes away from a, woman, a woman's natural beauty and also it is so bad for you. Like, you think about how skin absorbs things. I think a lot of women were upset because they think she has makeup on. A bunch of crap that you're putting on your face. And that is in turn making your skin worse. So you have to keep buying more foundation to yeah. cover up what it's creating. It's hard to tell, or maybe her skin it really is that flawless. I think it would be more problematic if she said, you know, I'm not wearing anything. My skin is flawless. And then she was wearing makeup because then a lot of girls would be like, oh, I don't look like that without makeup, right? But that's not what she's doing. I don't know why so many people are triggered over this. I'm not sure why or when makeup became so controversial, but maybe we'll get a better understanding of this after we watch the Jubilee video because we'll hear from people who are both pro and anti-makeup. Before we begin though, please make sure you are subscribed and have hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. We're just normal people that like to look good in person and just look good for everyone. I think that the beauty industry really prioritizes Eurocentric beauty standards. People say it's too much or try to say they're gonna wipe it off or <laughs> you know, just judge you for wearing it. We're for swimming on the first date. <laughs> Do you remember that? Women are oppressed by today's beauty standards. Everyone should walk forward. The beauty industry and the cosmetic industry preys on the insecurities that women and men as well feel. For example, with aging, wear this foundation, use these eye creams, do this, that. Otherwise, how will they make money? All the time. I always talk about this with my mom, especially when we see a commercial like, look younger you know you're you might be 75 but you should look 20 buy this cream and you'll look 20 and we always laugh at it because of how ridiculous it is there must be something wrong with you why aren't you buying our product like it's it is a problem especially when it comes to aging which is actually interesting because a lot of people yes they use makeup to you know appear younger but a lot of people also use makeup to try and look older and i know this is happening with uh younger kids today i think younger girls now are wearing a lot more makeup than like when I was in middle school, let's say. I wasn't even wearing makeup in middle school, but nowadays I think that's normalized. You don't look like you're aging. And I think that the aging process is a beautiful thing and it should be celebrated and it just shows like all of the life that you've lived and our skin and our faces, they all tell a story. I don't know why this reminded me of a TikTok. If I find it, I'll play it for you guys. Uh, but especially women, of Eastern European descent, we have two phases, right? That's what this TikTok was showing. It's like phase one, you know, you're in your 20s, 30s, you're looking great. Phase two, <laughs> you look like, I will show you the TikTok. <laughs> yeah, so, but you know what? I say embrace that second phase. You know, you throw a scarf on, you're drinking kvass, you're eating blinchiki on the porch, become a babushka. That sounds fun. I don't know, that, that's like exciting to me. I feel like every stage of your life is so beautiful. And I'm just not a fan of these commercials that are like, look youthful. Those disgusting wrinkles you have on your face that make you look like an old hag. Buy your cream and you can look 13. Facial blemishes will be a thing of the past. Cause of AIDS and is made from dead babies by people. A shocking new report confirms. Women get older. Men get older. You're not immortal. You, you shouldn't look like you're 12 forever. We're still all gonna get wrinkles. We're all gonna have to take the makeup off at the end of the day. We're all gonna die. So embrace every stage of life, I think. 
What's wrong with that? I've always struggled with acne scars and I was like looking on social media and everybody's skin looks like so even and so clear. But then I learned that there are a lot of filters that will actually do that. Like I only discovered this two months ago and then I used one and I was like, wait, now I look like everybody else? Yeah, I recently changed the setting on my camera. The camera comes automatically with the filter. So they just assume you want the filter. It's the norm to see women with perfect skin, even your makeup, like it's perfect. In real life, that's not what humans look like. Not, that's not what men look like. That's not what women look like. If you guys remember recently, men were calling Margot Robbie mid uh, after the Barbie movie came out. A lot of men were like, see, she's mid without makeup. She's like a seven at best. And it's like, okay, let's see you. We're gonna talk about Margot Robbie saying she's mid, let's see you. Definitely mid. Thank you to Nicholas Varola for uh, that comment. I did not like this movie, but the cast, I thought the casting was great. I thought that Margot Robbie made a great Barbie. She's perfect for Barbie and she's gorgeous. Like I know that beauty is subjective and maybe, you know, some of these men really don't find her attractive. But I do think that an issue here is that the men are so used to seeing perfect women photoshopped, you know, a lot of makeup on. You know what this is the result of? Corn addiction. And I also say Instagram model addiction. If you don't look like you have 3 million Instagram followers, then you're mid. Stop watching corn, go touch some grass, unfollow the Instagram models, and find God. Just men tend to just give me a lot more attention when I'm wearing makeup. And I don't know, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel good to me. And I swear when I'm not wearing it, not a peep comes, no one, no one comes my way. I think I like the latter. I like no one coming up to me or they just come up to me just because they like my energy or something like that. A lot of men, you'll hear them say, oh, you don't need makeup. I think the reason this annoys a lot of women uh, is because yeah, no one needs makeup. Like no one's gonna die from lack of makeup. That's never happened. <laughs> no one needs it. I know what they're trying to say. It's like, oh, you don't, you're naturally beautiful, or whatever, right? Okay, thank you. But even the women who are insecure, maybe they have acne or they have, maybe it's a burn victim, right? They have scars. It shouldn't matter. You shouldn't wait for anyone's permission to tell you you need makeup or you don't need makeup. You decide what you want to do. And that shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't rely on external validation. And for the women who say, well, I have to wear makeup because of the patriarchy. I, if I don't wear makeup, then men will say something about it. Girl, I thought you don't care about what the men say. And you shouldn't care. Your priority should be how you feel, your health, right? Your, your skin's health. Or the comment, well, that's easy for you to say. You look fine without makeup. Okay, but you should feel fine without makeup too. Again, your confidence should not rely on external validation. If you like the way you look, then don't wear the makeup if you don't want to wear the makeup. It's really that simple. No one is holding a gun to your head and saying, wear the makeup. Not the patriarchy, nothing. Just do as you please. It doesn't matter what men, it doesn't matter what other women think about it. Since I am like all over social media and like TV and stuff, when people expect me to show up and show face, they expect to glam and they expect mm -hmm. the makeup. And if I do show up without any of that, it's just like no one, it's like, where's the star? Where's the star power? Where's La Demi, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's kind of sad. That's La Demi. Sometimes La Demi has makeup on. Sometimes La Demi doesn't. Because in a lot of like makeup ads, they'll do the makeup look and then change the makeup look in Photoshop, but it just seems like it sets unrealistic expectations, A, for the product, and B, what it's gonna make you look like. When we're talking about your responsibility, like if you are, let's say, a beauty influencer, and you have had a lot of plastic surgery, like you look like a completely different person, and you have a brand that's tied to your appearance, like Kylie Jenner or something, right? But it's not natural, so if you're saying, oh, if you get this you know, lipstick, your lips will look huge, you'll look great, but then you've had lip injections, they don't look like you after they use your product, that I think is wrong. That is when you should be telling people, no, actually, I've had some work done. I don't think anyone has to go out and say, oh, I've had this procedure, or I am wearing makeup, I'm not wearing makeup, unless, again, you have like some sort of brand uh, that's tied to that, or you are saying outright, hey, this is my natural face, my skin is perfect, um, everything is perfect, but it's like you're wearing makeup or you've had plastic surgery. I don't know if you've read about the attractiveness bias, but it's the idea that pretty people are like perceived as like more welcoming, more educated. Mm -hmm. um, so I've definitely gone into interviews or like heard my employer talk about people and it's not that they'll say like, oh, she wasn't wearing makeup. They'll say like, she didn't seem as ready or like she wasn't as put together. I think being put together and taking care of yourself being professional, that's having good hygiene, that's a must, right? You know, wearing something nice to your job interview, look presentable, 
But it doesn't have to mean having a full face of makeup or even any makeup. Breakouts happen. Wrinkles happen. It's your skin. This isn't a beauty contest. Unless you're applying to be a beauty influencer, like a makeup artist, then why should you have to wear makeup? But I used to wear a lot, and then ultimately at some point, makeup comes off, yeah. Yeah. you know? This is the reason I've never been one of those people that wear makeup every day. I hate taking it off. It is so annoying. You have to scrub your face. You have to go in the second time, wash it, you know, Q-tips, everything. Like, you have to make sure you have everything off. It's like, it's not even worth it at this point. I hate that part. <laughs> it's so annoying. Putting it on is a lot of fun. A lot of men think that women just wear makeup to get the attention of men or, you know, to compete with other women. But I promise you, okay, I swear to you even, that a lot of women, it's just fun. There have been times even when I was younger that if I was bored or something, I would put on makeup and then take it off without even leaving my room because it was just fun. I think people should do whatever they please. For example, today, I didn't feel like wearing any makeup. It, it really just depends on how you feel. But again, if you are waking up and you're thinking, oh my God, I can't let people see me without my makeup on, perhaps there's a problem. Uh, sometimes for me, I do feel uncomfortable because, you know, I just want to have like nice skin like on in public or like a full glam on in public. But sometimes I don't want to deal with like people just staring me down or like little kids coming up to me and be like, why are you wearing makeup? That's for girls. So I just sometimes don't even go out with makeup that much. The news, a lot of those men are wearing some makeup, right? Like concealer, they have a pimple or wrinkles or something. A lot of men in the media are wearing makeup. Um, even historically, men used to wear makeup in theater and stuff like that. So it's a lot more common than you may think. And of course, there are beauty influencers like him, like Jeffree Star, you know, James Charles, who are really good at makeup, right? Yeah, no, it affects both men and women. It's just different for women because it's a lot more common, obviously. But a lot of women feel like they have to wear makeup because their friends are wearing it or, you know, they only see women on TV with makeup on, which honestly, when was the last time you saw like an actress or something with no makeup on TV? or like doing an interview or something. You'll see them do that on Insta. You'll see them, but on TV? I don't think I've seen that recently or ever. If anything, I think it's gonna become more common for everyone to feel like they have to wear makeup all the time. I am trans and I definitely know what it feels like to not be able to leave the house without something to validate me as a woman to society. Okay, to validate you as a woman. The, this is a little strange to hear because I don't know if this specific trans woman holds this opinion, but a lot of people will say, you know, oh, well, having female genitalia doesn't make you a woman, but apparently ha wearing makeup does. Apparently wearing a dress does. So are you less of a woman if you're not wearing makeup or if you're not wearing a dress? Like, that's a little silly. You know what I mean? Again, I don't know if this trans woman feels that way, that, you know, makeup equals woman, but XX chromosomes don't. But a lot of people who say that will also say, oh, see, today I'm wearing a dress, so today my pronouns are she, her. I would, like, spend the night with a guy and I would not take off my makeup. <laughs> like, I would sleep with my makeup and even, like, 10 minutes before, like, waking up, waking up, I'd run back to the restroom, touch up, put oh on a lip stain, so I would wake up, like, I used to, before we were boyfriend and girlfriend, I used to sleep in my makeup and makeup all over this dude's pillow. <laughs> okay, that's so sad and this isn't the first time i'm hearing this like a lot of women they will wake up run to the bathroom put on makeup go back to bed and pretend you're waking up with blue eyeshadow with mascara like and then what the men don't realize <laughs> like I'm, that's just so hard to believe she always has pink eyeshadow on and she was just born with it like, how don't they know? And then there's this question of, is it false advertisement? <laughs> For example, if a woman wears high heels, you can see the high heels, you know that she's wearing high heels, that's not her real height, but with makeup also, you can see she's wearing false eyelashes or something. I, I, a lot of the time it can be natural and it can be hard to tell, I understand. But also you, you can tell in real life at least when a person is wearing makeup because makeup has texture, right? You can see it on someone's face that there's something covering their skin. So I don't think people are trying to really deceive other people into thinking that this is their natural lip color or eyelash color or whatever. I just think if it makes them feel more comfortable, if it makes them feel more confident, okay, I don't think saying it's false advertisement <laughs> makes a lot of sense, you know? Like eventually you'll take the high heels off and people will see how tall you really are. You'll take your makeup off and you'll see, you know, how your face looks. 
Altering your skin color is cultural appropriation. When I was in high school, it was like a very white high school essentially, and I remember somebody like wrote a note to me that was supposed to be nice, and they said, you have that beautiful tan skin that I long for. And I was like, what is this white girl saying to me? <laughs> like, what? And I, like, I didn't even know how to react because I think it was meant to be a compliment. Like, my skin is not like a commodity. Like, my brownness mm -hmm. is not up for you to take and claim as your own as you so please. I think she was really just trying to compliment you, you know? Like, if someone said, I like your skin color, no, that would be kind of weird, actually. I, you have that pale skin I long for. <laughs> In the media nowadays, the backlash is, they do not forgive that person. I just don't think that the dialogue is, is healthy or helpful and progressive for all people of different races to be united. Well, that's good. I think she's against cancel culture is what she's trying to say. There is no harm in children using makeup. I mean, I guess it, it could be fine if they just, you know, found your makeup kit and they're just, you know, playing around with the makeup. But if they're wearing the makeup out, if like a kindergartner is wearing makeup to school, to look prettier or something, yeah, that's very concerning. Eight-year-old girls wearing makeup. In the same way we're seeing very, very young children with iPhones and things like that. You're growing up too fast, you don't need that right now. Focus on being a kid. Why are you focused so much on what you look like? When I was very young, no one was talking about that kind of thing. My eyelashes, my lipstick is so, like, what? We were, like, in the dirt, on the trampoline. We were doing, you know, kid stuff. And it's kind of sad. If there are very young children nowadays, you know, like wearing a full face of makeup. My mom putting the makeup on me as a child, mm -hmm. and now you have this adult that feels like she has to be presentable all the time. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. C causing acne. No. I don't even think that makeup causes acne. No, it, it definitely could. It can clog your pores. It can definitely cause acne, irritate your skin. Because of pervs out here. I wouldn't want my little sister wearing makeup so young because I wouldn't want her to attract the wrong attention. Is there a certain age that you guys think it's appropriate for them to start wearing makeup? I'll say puberty. <laughs> <laughs> I think I started wearing mascara when I was like 14-ish. And all throughout high school, sometimes I'd wear some mascara or some concealer if I didn't sleep at all, which was quite often. This is gonna sound so weird, but I actually like dark circles now. Like, I see them, I think they're adorable, which is definitely not a popular opinion. You know what I mean? I used to work at Ulta, so um, there would be like little girls just coming in looking for foundation and there were like seven or six. Six? You have like a six-year-old client for hair and she has makeup palettes like from the store and she's six. For a six-year-old to have multiple, yeah. like yeah. no. <laughs> and there is such a thing as too much makeup. I guess it depends on the context. For example, if you're in the circus or maybe you work as a clown for kids. The more the better. But if you're going for an interview, right, then yeah, there can be too much. At the point where you start to not look like yourself, excessive contouring where girls literally look like they're changing the bone structure of their face. Like that's talent, but like also that's not you. Plays into like being taken seriously. Like if you're going for a job interview or anything, like, it's someone, too. like sometimes you need to step in and be like, hey sis, you're doing your thing, but that's too much. Yeah. Like it's way out of line. If you're wearing makeup, we're gonna, could we're you, gonna, yeah. we're gonna look at it. Yeah. We're gonna look at it and we're gonna look at what we would have done differently. How have you responded when people give you feedback about your makeup? Like, oh, it's too much or like this is too extra or something like that. I just tell them to go f themselves. <laughs> Constructive criticism is good. Or it's only good if they agree with you. But then if it's like, oh, you know, I would have done that differently. F you. For someone to sit there and, you know, basically say, like, they're against makeup and they don't have to wear makeup because they're just naturally, you know, gorge or whatever. It's actually a blessing in disguise for them because out there in the world, there's, you know, people that have their face burned. There's people that have mm -hmm. scars. There's people that have um, blemishes and all kinds of crazy things, and they don't have a choice. Maybe if they don't want to wear makeup, but they have to put makeup on to be presented and accepted by society. Oh, I like this comment under the video. It says, I wear makeup, but it's pretty ignorant and untruthful to laugh or deny the fact that the beauty slash makeup industry exploits people's insecurities. That's true. It really just depends why you're wearing the makeup. Are you so insecure that you can't leave the house without makeup on? Because then that might be a problem for you, right? Or is it just something you do for fun? Is it just something you do to get a little confidence boost? And that's all for today's video, guys. Please make sure you comment below how you think makeup is affecting both men and women in our society. And make sure you are subscribed and have hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.